If you have a router at home, you probably know that it's not a security device, uh, meaning that it's not meant to protect you from threats on the inside or outside of your network. Instead, you should be using a device such as a firewall that has specific features that are meant to protect you from different threats such as uh, malware, uh, denial of service attacks, or even to take advantage of some capabilities like VPN, views of private network that will allow you to connect to remote locations. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to download, install and configure the open source firewall PFSense on a virtual machine uh, using VMware Workstation. There are two PFSense versions available. One is the PFSense Plus and that's the paid version and another one is the PFSense Community Edition or the free version. So we're going to download the PFSense Community Edition. Now let's begin by downloading the PFSense software. So at the time of this recording, the current version is 2.7.0. So I'm just going to Google it and this is going to be the first result. Now, if we go to this page, that's going to be the PFSense official page and we have to sign in in order to download the software. Now, I'm going to show you that this process is not working at the time of this recording. And I'll also show you the option or the workaround where we can get the software. So if I click on download, it's going to take me to another page. And here I have to select the image. And in this case, we want to select the virtual machine option. So I'm just going to add to cart. And it is now if we enter cart, now you can see that it says NetGate installer. It doesn't mention anything related to uh, PFSense Community Edition. Now the next step is going to show uh, the private uh, details related to my account. But you see, you won't be charged because you're able to download this. The thing is that this process won't work. I did it before and during the installation process, it just wasn't working. And I wasn't the only one with this problem. So I found this uh, forum and actually NetGate official forum. There were other people complaining about it. And so in order to get the file, the PFSense file, we have to get it from this link. So I'm just going to the link. And here we should be able to download the PFSense software community edition version. So I'm just going to download this file, the PFSense 272. So it seems to be the most up to date at the time of this recording. So I'm just going to download it. Now, as you can see, this file will be downloaded as .gz extension, meaning we have to extract that file. Now, if you're on Windows computer, you can use 7-zip for that or if you're using Mac or Linux, you can use gzip on the terminal to extract the ISO file so that we can import it or to install the PFSense software on the VMware machine. Okay, so next we're going to create a new virtual machine and we're going to select custom and I'm just going to keep it default. Then we're going to select the option to install the operating system later. So click on next and for Linux operating system, we're going to select Linux and other Linux 64 bit. And here we're going to provide a name for this VM. So in my case, it's going to be PF sense. And I'm just going to set the location. Now for the number of core, I'm just going to select two processors and one core per processor. And I'm just going to give it two gigs just because I can. And now we're going to just select one type of network. But next we're going to add one additional network because this is a firewall. So a firewall should have at minimum two interface. Depending on which type of environment, there are environments where we can deploy just one single interface and then use sub interfaces for that. But in this case, we're just going to install two interface, one to act as the uh, LAN side and another one to act as the WAN side. I'm just going to confirm this, click on next. As for the controller type, just click on next. The disk type also, I'm just going to keep default. And we're going to create a new virtual disk. As for size, I'm just going to give it 80. But again, we're going to 
just keep it as simple click on next and just confirm the hard disk name and just finish the configuration or the creation of the new virtual machine okay so next we want to edit the vm so we click edit virtual machine settings and so a couple of things that i'm going to change so first the network adapter i'm just going to change to uh according to my networks uh so i'm just going to custom vm so you have to set it ac according to your environment so in my case this is the networks that i use for this type of deployment so i have two interfaces so now here on cd i'm going to get the iso file that i downloaded from uh, pfSense. Okay, we can power on and begin the installation. So I'm just going to leave it default and it's going to load uh, with the first option. We're going to be presented with the license agreement, so I'm just going to accept and we're going to select the option install pfSense. Uh, we're going to just keep it default, so use ZFS auto and proceed with installation. Uh, stripe no redundancy just going to hit spacebar just to confirm that this is what we're going to install and click ok and yes we are sure that we want to destroy this uh, and confirm yes and now it should start uh, installing so hopefully there are no errors at this stage and yes looks like everything is working just fine okay so next we're going to confirm and reboot the vm okay the installation is completed so now we have to adjust the interface settings so that we can log into the pfSense. now in my case it got everything just messed up so i want to change the interface uh, ip address assignment because i want to use the uh, subnet 192.168.43 as my LAN site and 192.168.1 as the WAN side okay so to do that we can use the option let me see so set interface so that should be option number two and i want to so first i want so probably i should change the WAN first and configure ipv4 using dhcp nope enter the new one address so i'm going to use 191681 just name is 100 and the subnet bit count i'm going to choose 24 for for one enter the new one gateway for LAN. press enter just confirm uh, no i don't want to configure pv6 nope oh just enter for not yes do you want to enable jcp or not no i don't want uh no and so please wait so now i want to change and so now i want to change the uh, lan ip address so i'm going to set interface again and i'm going to change lan configure ip using dhcp no i um, want to assign the ip address myself and the uh, bit counts is going to be 24 and just confirm enter no, I don't want just none. Do you want to enable DHCP? No, I don't want. We could enable DHCP, but we're just going to focus on the firewall, not on the clients that are going to sit behind the firewall. So I'm not going to enable DHCP. Do you want to reverse? No, I don't want. And so in order to access the PFSense, that should be the address in my case. So HTTPS uh, 192.168.43.100. So I'm just click enter to continue now before doing anything else i'm just going to confirm that actually i can access this firewall by testing reachability from pfSense to another device that i have on the same subnet so i'm just going to select option 8 shell and i'm just going to ping 192.168.43.30 and it's reachable okay so it means that this pfSense firewall now is in the same subnet as my other devices okay so now let's log into pfSense i'm just going to confirm this uh, uh message so now the default credential should be admin and the password should be pfSense yeah that's right okay so welcome so that's the initial uh, wizard setup I'm just going to confirm next um yeah yeah yes we want to confirm so hostname is just going to leave as default 
uh, domain, yes, primary DNS. I'm just going to leave this as default because this is running on a live environment. So I don't have NTP or DNS services enabled. So our time zone also, I'm just going to leave this as it is. Uh, configure one. So I don't want to change this. I'm just going to leave the IP address just assigned on using the CLI and using the console actually. Now for gateway, I could set a gateway if I had a gateway. So that should be the, in a real environment, that should be the service provider IP address. Uh, everything else I'm just going to leave as it is, 19. Now the LAN IP address, I don't want to change this. I'm just going to leave this as it is. Click on next. And I have to change the admin password. So I'm just going to type my new super secret password and click on next. Now it's going to reload. Uh, that's going to be a light reload on PFSense. And we should be able to continue uh, once it reloads. So it looks like it's done. It's configured. Yes, so we can click on finish and we have a new firewall PFSense available. Okay, so I'm just going to accept here and confirm. So that's okay. Okay, so that's, we have two interfaces. So that's the WAN interface, that's the LAN interface. Uh, we have some details such as the CPU usage, memory, disk. So all of these still available because this is a fresh deployment. Now, if we want to make changes such as the interface IP address assignment, we could still do it using the console direct access to the VM, or we could also go over here on this menu. So when interface, we can make changes here and then save, or we can go to LAN and make the changes over here. Okay, but these just make it looks like it is a router, right? We have IP address, we have interfaces, but what's cool about a firewall is we can create rules and we can as create rules on the one side. We can create rules on the land side as well. So uh, normally we would deploy the rules on the land side uh, explicitly allowing all the nice specific traffic. Now, by default, uh, PFSense is going to allow all IPv4, all IPv6 traffic to any destinations. And we, as network admins, we want to have control of which type of traffic we are allowing. So, for instance, when we deploy a router at home, uh, normally that router just allows everything. So, you can imagine that if even traffic that we need, uh, such as ports like uh, HTTP, HTTPS, other unknown ports are also passing through the router. So, we want to have control of what we are allowing. Now, normally we should only allow a couple of protocols or services. So we're going to create a couple of rules just for demo. And so we want to select, for instance, uh, the interface that's going to be LAN, the address is going to be IPv4, the protocol TCP. Let's only allow HTTPS. Uh, so because most of the websites nowadays, they should only run or accept HTTPS. So the source, instead of uh, using any, I'm just going to select LAN subnets. And the destination, because this is supposed to allow traffic to the internet, so we don't know which IP address we're going to allow, so I'm just going to leave as any. And uh, now I want to port range, so I want to select HTTPS. We shouldn't have here HTTPS, okay? And we can enable log packets uh, handled by this rule if we want, but Normally, we shouldn't do that. And we just created this new rule. Now, it is the best practice to start adding specific rules on top of more uh, generic, generic rules, such as this one. So this way, traffic that we want to allow, we want to make sure that it's hitting the rules we are creating instead of these two uh, broad rules. So let's add one more, uh, for instance, for DNS. And the source, let's select LAN subnet. And the destination we're going to leave as any. And that should be uh, UDP. Although sometimes I see that some services, they use TCP or UDP. So I'm just going to allow both of them, TCP, UDP. Now the destination port is going to be uh, 53. So I'm going to select DNS 53. I'm just going to save that. 
Okay, so we allow HTTPS, we are allowing DNS. So we can apply those changes, okay? Which means that traffic that is living using these services would hit these two rules. Now, we can get to a point that we are sure about what we are allowing on our network. We can then, uh, before removing these rules, but at least just disable them, okay? So we can disable this easily. Okay, which means that traffic that won't be allowed on these two rules is going to be denied explicitly because at the end of a firewall rule, the only rule available is to deny everything. Okay, so that's what we want. And if, in case we want to monitor what's passing through, we can, uh, let me close this. We should be able to get information here about which rules are uh, being denied or not. Okay, so that's a simple deployment of PFSense firewall on a VMware workstation. Now in the next video, probably we'll dive a little deeper and we'll be able to deploy things such as DNS filtering, how to block ads, how to block uh, adult content, how to uh, prevent traffic from rich specific content. So a lot of cool stuff. Now, if you took value from this video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and I'll see you on the next one.